So about a year ago, I did a video on this SwitchBot range, which is uh, a range of uh, smart devices that connect to your Google, your uh, Amazon Home, and their own little um, Amazon Lexi, you know, that her name, and uh, also to its own little hub. Uh, it can be cloud connected, obviously, with the smart speakers, or you can just run it in Bluetooth mode or similar. Now, I don't want to redo that whole video. You can check that out. The thing that I uh, am doing today, a year on from having it running in our house, and we use it because we have this really old crusty air conditioning unit here that um, has to be manually powered. Now, I could rip it off and rewire it, but there's no guarantee that there is uh, the right device for something that's this old. So, a long time ago, I installed this little SwitchBot here, which turns it on. The challenge that I have, and I've kind of been waiting for SwitchBot to solve for me, is that SwitchBot can run in press mode with a timer. So if you have, say, a coffee maker or an air conditioning unit or any old unit that needs to be powered manually, you can say, and, and it might require a long press. So you can say with these devices, when you press the button, press it for a second, two second, three second, four second, etc. This is great. This old unit takes an instant on. So when you press the on button, it turns on. But to turn it off, you have to hold it down for about three seconds. Now a SwitchBot, if you're listening, I'd love for you to, to do this. It would be nice to have an on length of time and an off length of time so that older devices like this could be controlled through one of these SwitchBot devices. How do you get around it? Well, I have two SwitchBot devices. These are very affordable. I'll, as always, include links. These are very affordable little units that are just little powered motor switches. So to make them run, obviously uh, they come out and press on. Sorry, had a brain freeze there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this device, uh, which is also a SwitchBot. I, I've got a one white one and black one black one, which is terrible. I mean, aesthetically, it should be another white one, but I don't have one. So I'm going to put that on the bottom and the top switch will be the switch that turns it on and that's programmed for one second. The switch at the bottom will turn it off and that's gonna be programmed for about three seconds. Now, I will have to call them different things because when I say Lexi, turn on the main heater, this will come down and turn on for one second, and then I need to name this something else. So I'll probably call this like, I don't know, heater bot. And then I'll say, uh, turn on heater bot. Now, because, here's the, here's the, the twist. Because uh, smart speakers don't know the on or off state of such an analog device as this, it's weird to say, turn on the main heater, and then say, turn on the switch bot to make the switch bot turn on. But because Lexi and Google Home don't know the state of this device, you can still just say off uh, or on. So you could say, turn off uh, the heater bot so that it feels natural. You're turning off the heater. So turn off the heater bot, just has to have a different name. Then it will switch that, hold it for three seconds and turn off. That was a really long-winded way of saying, with two of these devices, you can run a switch with different times. Otherwise, obviously, you've got the press and you've also got the switch function on this so that you can control lots of different things like rocker switches or like press button switches like this, as I say, coffee makers, air conditioning, etc. Anyway, that's a good little tip. Uh, hopefully, it's helpful to you. If you haven't checked out SwitchBot, totally worth it if you've got any old analog switches or analog digital that need pushing uh, from a real button. Cool.